Happy Tuesday and welcome to Post Sports Live. I'm your host, Jonathan Forsyth. Short show today. We've got one less guest. Dan Steinberg is feeling under the weather. Dan, if you're watching at home, we hope you feel better. LeVar Arrington is here, as well as Mike Wise. Mike, how are you today? As well as Mike... Um, I almost said Mike Wise uh, guy, his Twitter worry. handle. His don't Twitter worry. handle. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here with an esteemed colleague and you, Forsyth. <laughs> yes, thank you very, very well. Did you guys have good Thanksgivings? Yes, yes thank yes. you. Very good. All right, very good. I just want a, a quick shout out to my alma mater, Linganore High School, going to the state championship game 3A. Beat uh, over the weekend and watched them come back from a 19 point deficit in to beat River Hill. In football or chess? That was a. <laughs> it was chess, actually. It was football. Yeah. They're playing at, at, uh, at uh, Raven Stadium oh, Thursday night. Big time stuff. I'm glad you graduated. So shout out to the Lancers. All right. So, for that, we got a lot to talk about today in today's show. We're going to talk about the, the Redskins playing out the season, what they have to play for, the motivation. We'll get LeVar's take on that, having been in that situation before. Talk about the Shanahan's uh, future with the team and, and the relationship with RG3 after the column that you wrote, Mike, today. That was very thought-provoking on their relationship. We'll, we'll preview the Chiefs game. We'll catch up with Mike Jones um, to talk about some of the locker room stuff following the Giants game. And uh, we'll talk the Wizards. They're 9-9. Nine and nine. Hey, there's a lot else going on in sports right now to be excited about. There the Nats go. made a big trade. Got Doug Fister. The Caps are playing. The Caps well. are playing pretty well. The Wizards are nine and nine and number three seed right now in the playoffs. So anyway, plenty to talk about. But I want to start off as always, guys, with the Redskins and Lavar. Here's the question, and it's sort of an open-ended one. But could the loss of the Giants be the loss that ultimately sinks Mike Shanahan? It could be a reference game. Mm -hmm. But he still has a chance to, right now, I believe he keeps his job. What will happen in the next four games, I, I think, will determine if you're able to bring him back. There's, there's a possibility that Mike Shanahan and this, this staff can lose in a manner where you, can't, you just can't justify bringing him back. I do believe four games left, that, that's enough for him to have epic losses, not just lose games, but if he loses in a way where it seems as though there's just something that's just not there, it may be a reference point. But I won't say that this is the game. As of right now, I would assume that it's safe to, to, to think that he's going to have his job next year. Mike, what's your take on the Giants' loss specifically? Obviously, a lot bigger picture. Too. Well, Mike Shanahan's got two things working for him right now. Twenty-one of his players are free agents, and and as Lavar knows, a lot of these guys, the next four games might not mean anything to the fans in terms of playoff positioning, which they're out of it. But but they need to they need to get jobs next year. Uh, Josh Morgan has three years left on his deal. He's probably not coming back to this team. My my assumption is he's not going to. Josh Morgan's got to find a job. He's got to, you know, so there's some some players on this team that actually have to uh, have to perform Why would and Josh do Morgan something. Morgan, I have a job next year. Well, they, there is a. I'm not saying What's he won't have, have a job. Have well, I'm saying here, here. At this, at this, because they have a, they have a, de they have a deal in which they can walk away from his deal and not pay him a cent after this year because his every, he's, he's been paid but, up but front. A, but answer the question: Why get rid of Josh Morgan after this season? Because you will have extreme numbers and millions of dollars that you didn't have before, and you can go out and get a receiver that's not what I think is a number three receiver on a team. You know, what's if interesting, that. what's interesting, the reason why I asked that question. You like that I answered it? Yeah, well, it, 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 it kind of, it plays into to what, yeah. it didn't play completely into it. I, I thought you would go strictly into, he hasn't produced. Well. A guy loses his job, and that's the common sense answer, right? Right. It, is that he did not produce. Mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly believe that, again, I've been ringing this bell. This is my epiphany as to why this team continues to suffer. We'll talk about free agents. We'll talk about bringing guys here and can we bring them here based off of a one-year contract with a coach. Well, the problem is you have a culture where guys are being rewarded before they produce anything. Starting with yep. the GM, moving down to the coach. Then there's players. There's players. Will they give a Rackpo a, a bigger contract? Does he deserve a bigger contract? Did D'Angelo Hall, Hall deserve the contract that he received when he came here? Did Albert Hainsworth 
deserve the contract that he received when he came here. You have, did, did Robert Griffin III deserve the attention that he received when he came here? <laughs> hey, it, I know exactly where you're going, and it's a great point. There's an equation here. Mm -hmm. I have finally come to the conclusion that the reason why the Redskins organization fails is that there is a fundamental fracture in the locker room based off of who's rewarded and who isn't. That's first and foremost, starts in the locker room. So I'm looking at this guy over here. He makes millions and millions of dollars. I make minimum wage. I'm a Redskin guy. He's a free agent. He's a draft pick. I've been here. I've done nothing. This guy gets all the You're attention, so all right. these they, different they, things, right? They don't, com they don't compensate people who carry water for the a organization. A guy like Lorenzo Alexander, right. a guy, right. a guy right. like Antonio Rock Cartwright. Right. 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 These guys come and go, right. and they're not valued. That's, just, that's in the locker room. But then you have coaches. Name me one coach. The, the coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars, I believe, makes $3.9 million, I believe, which is yeah. nothing to sneeze at. But when you compare 3.9 to 7, seven there is no comparison. This man came here, and, and these coaches, you had defensive coordinators. I believe Greg Williams made more money. Greg Williams produced, but I believe Greg Williams as a defensive coordinator made more than most yep. head coaches mm -hmm. in the National Football League. Guys are being rewarded. They, there is, I, and I, you know, I've now come to the place where I, you hold Dan Snyder accountable for that, but in a way, he is trying to build a winner based off of paying for the best yeah. employees that he can pay. And I think it's, <laughs> a, it's horribly backfiring. Keep, keep an extra minute. I want your take on that, Mike, on, on, on that. I, to some degree, I think that that is how a lot of the NFL yeah. works. You have to pay people up front <sighs> before, I mean, to, to attract talent to well, some degree. Granted, there are the outliers. But you have to be the, able to build your talent. You have to be able to have guys who are hungry as a coach and, 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 and a the, staff to build a, the, build the blue a team. blue-collar type. Yeah, there, was, yeah, no, the, that's fair. there was a moment, though, when, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, go ahead. Finish your thought. Well, I was going to say that it was more, LeVar's right. There's a moment when Clinton Portis got up to the microphone after he was compensated, and one of the first things he said was, Hey, all my friends come here. This is where you can get paid. Right, right. And so, so if that mentality is out there, that, that this is where you can get rich. You make your bones somewhere else, but you, you get rich here. But is that, that still that, the case that, now? I, it, I, has I, I, it has to be. It has to be. I think it's, I think it's dangerous. Bit, I think it's a dangerous culture it's, because... The culture's changing, though. You've got to give Shannon some credit How do you there. figure the culture's getting, he changing? Chased out, he chased out Hainsworth. Guys like that, those, those prices. I mean, it's, it's changing. I'm not saying it's completely gone. How... I, I, I'm totally mind boggled by so many people who says the culture of this team has changed. How? You chased out one player that was a cancer to this team. Okay, John, but, but that's great. But where has the culture of this team changed? It's beyond still a losing culture. Right, beyond RG3, who's overpaid right now? Well, the, well, here's the here's the problem. You have guys. I, I don't. Wait, wait, wait. I don't, did you say beyond RG3 oh, who's saying, overpaid? I, I don't. Well, well RG3's not overpaid. What they, what they gave up for him. I'm saying what they gave up for him in that I'm, regard. I'm saying this in terms of payment versus versus production. All right. It's not about looking at the locker room and saying, okay, our cap is good because of the contracts that we have in place. I'm saying who is valued versus who isn't valued and, and where that money is going. So even if a player isn't overpaid every guy per in se. The, every guy in the offensive line maybe except Trent Williams is overpaid if they're making a dollar. <laughs> right. It's a joke. Right. Let's move that on. offensive line is a okay. joke it's, right it's, now. It's There's difficult to move on from saying that a culture has been changed, Forsyth. You cannot say that the culture of this well, team has changed because you he's are bought still in. the winning he's culture. Still still getting, the losing still getting culture the hasn't results. changed. I'll, I'll give you that. You're the same results. The same You're results. Right. At the end of the day, wins and losses. And if that's the case, then you would think Shanahan would be under a lot of pressure. It's, I'd be surprised if that's the, the case. Way he comes back. And Let's talk too, RG3 though. minutes. I got to move sure. on. Let's move on. Got to move on. Keep moving. Is there any merit, Mike? Sally Jenkins wrote a column over the weekend that argued to sit RG3 and let him learn and sit there and sort of take in, and is there any merit to that argument? And then our colleague Jason Reed sort of wrote a rebuttal the next day saying, no, no, the best way for him to learn is to buy, buy playing. Is there any merit to sitting him and seeing Cousins? Yeah, well, there's merit for Sally because she needed to produce a column that day. <laughs> but he, no, look, I respect her opinion sure. on it. And, and I would assume that she's talked to coaches and not just come up with that out of thin air. So um, it, it's, it's, it's a thought. 
my thought is completely the opposite, and I do agree with Jason Reed on this, that, that um, this season, while everybody wanted to go to the playoffs and take the next step in this town and, and in that organization, this season and these first three years of the RG3 era were about Robert Griffin III's maturity and development as an elite quarterback in this league. And to me, for you to develop and, and become that guy, unless you're hurt, unless you're physically banged up and it, and it, and it causes you problems out there and you put yourself at, fur, at further risk for another catastrophic injury, I, I don't see how you take him off the field. You know, if he's learned anything, I don't know if anybody saw this, but that game last week, one of the things that people see um, in scouting is that he can be um, he can be basically chased out of the pocket pretty easily be, uh, with a push up the middle, and he also and that's when he throws the um, the complex passes over the top that get him in trouble. Well, whatever they did to work on it, they got they, he got rid of the ball a lot earlier. He mm -hmm. became check down guy yep. at times, and now maybe he resorted that too often. But it's still all of a sudden. You got to learn that. You know, you got you got to learn that. All the great ones learn to be a check down guy when their their hot routes are covered, when they're when they're intermediate. You guy. have to see your routes, right? And so so he needs so you don't see those routes just watching Kirk Cousins. Right. Uh, you, you see those routes when a guy is bull rushing you, and you're and you've got a second to react. Let me ask you to, to be more specific to the column you wrote today, which is the relationship between RG three. And Shanahan, how important is that? Is do you see any way of Shanahan mending that relationship before the end of the season? And if not, are the last four games more important as far as how the team plays rather than their specific relationship? I still think much of it has to do with winning, uh, and, and I'm not saying they got to run the table, um, but I do think that th at some point you have to feel good about what's happening going forward. And when I say mend their relationship. I don't know if it's broken forever. I don't know if they've already put that aside and said we got to win football games now. I do know down deep there's there's a little resentment on both sides that needs to be taken care of. And and before Mike Shanahan comes back, if he doesn't have a conversation with that about Robert Griffin the third, he certainly needs to have a conversation with about Dan Snyder because everybody says, well, is Mike Shanahan going to be back? Does he want to come back if that's his relationship with his starting quarterback? If his starting quarterback is always going to go uh, um, off message in a press conference. No, but the, the, does Mike but the culture here has changed. I mean, it's a, it's a changed culture. <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry. Right. Right. What you're saying. That's totally right. This is not the Jim Zorn Redskins. It cannot right. be accurate. You give Mike, Shanahan a little right. bit of credit. There's more that's coaches a, here than Jim Zorn, man. Yeah, because, uh, because in Zorn, the same results. you're right, Laverne. Jim Zorn, Zorn had more success Zorn, than you know, Mike Shanahan. In the Zorn era, year. wide receivers would do things like kick balls and get unsportsman well, penalties. Fair enough. And there would be a loss of composure on the field. That never has happened with Mike Shanahan. I don't recall Jim Zorn's quarterback having a back and forth with him in the media either. I just, you know, point. last I checked. Hang on, uh, hang on, know. hang on. So but let me ask you this. Better. More important the for changed. Shanahan's future, yeah. the last four games in meaningless contests or his relationship with RG3, LeVar? We'll, t we'll get some extra time if we need it. I, I don't need extra time. His relationship with RG3 will dictate everything. I think that that's, that's what it comes. Mm. So I, he, I, I would, I does would he truly need the endorsement? Add, does he need RG3's endorsement to Snyder to stay? Well, I think he's going to be here for another year. I, I really do. I, I don't see any coaching prospects out here that you would say it's worth starting over when he has one more year. Were we going to pay him $7 million to go sit home and find another coaching prospect to get going? That's another uh, staple of, of the culture of, of this, this organization. I think he'll finish, but it ultimately comes back to What's the relationship between him and RG3? And can he give a clear enough picture to Daniel Snyder going forward as to what they can expect? I, I, and I think that that's fair. You're paying a guy that, mon that amount of money yearly. We, he could at least do that. We caught up with Mike Jones earlier today via Skype. Let's catch up with him on the one-on-one -on -one segment, see what he has to say about it. Joining us now from his home on the Eastern Shore via Skype is Redskins beat writer Mike Jones. Mike, thanks for joining us on Post Sports Live. Oh, sure. Thanks for having me. 
Mike, let's get right to it. The Redskins are out of the playoffs, three and nine. Um, is the rest of the season evaluation mode, and do you anticipate seeing a lot of the younger players? It sort of shifts for evaluation mode, but at the same time, Mike Shanahan needs to win to kind of try to save his job, to help his argument, and he needs to show that these guys are still buying into his philosophy, that they're still fighting hard for him. So he can't go totally young. The first thing, if you want to lose your team, is you start playing young players and sitting veterans. He's under the firm belief that what he should do is continue to play the best players and he'll evaluate some of those young guys in practices as they go against the scout team. But for the most part, it sounds like Shanahan's going to stick with his veterans and try to win this game. And basically, they want to continue to see growth out of Griffin. That's the other main thing out of these four games as they come down the stretch. All right, speaking of Griffin, got to talk about Kirk Cousins. One, do you expect to see him at all short of a Griffin injury? And second, if not, do you expect to see a change in the play calling that would uh, lessen some of the exposure of Robert Griffin III on the read option plays or the triple options. I don't expect to see Cousins. Uh, Shanahan has said, uh, and he was asked again about it yesterday, and he said only way basically is if Griffin gets hurt, and Griffin is not injured in any way right now. He's healthy. They are going to continue to just throw everything at him because they know that the only way that he's going to continue to work his way back into the mix, which has been a struggle this year, is for him to continue to play. Um, you know, it just depends on what the game plan calls for it. You saw that the Giants really were focusing on taking away Alfred Morris, and so that's why there was a lot of the zone read plays by Griffin. They're going at this as if they are still fighting for something. Shannon said they want to play spoiler, and like I said, this is an audition for him uh, and for a lot of these players uh, for the future. I'm wondering if Shanahan can salvage the relationship with Griffin and whether or not that's the most important factor as far as Shanahan returning for his fifth year. That relationship, I think, will play a, a key role. Um, I'm not saying that Griffin is calling any shots, but and he's not going to go into Dan Snyder's office and say, get rid of this guy or keep this guy. But if he is asked, which, you know, many franchise quarterbacks, they, they their pulse on the head coach is taken. If he's asked, I think he would share, you know, what he felt. And so I think that it is important that Shanahan has a good relationship with him. And I think Mike knows that. We've seen um, him handle this situation with care this season. I think some of the trust has been earned back. How much uh, is still hard to say. And kind of like you said, these last four games will kind of determine. Let's talk about the rest of the locker room. Obviously, it's critical, the relationship between Shanahan and Griffin. But what about the rest of the locker room, the veterans? What's their level of support for Shanahan that you sense? You know, they all support him. They, they've said a number of guys like Trent Williams, um, uh, London Fletcher, uh, Santana Moss, you know, any uh, Brian Arakpo, any of these guys who are more outspoken players, they all say this is not a coaching issue. This is our problem. We are not executing. Logan Paulson said, you know, we're watching things on game film. We're seeing what we need to do. And for some reason, we're not able to execute it when we go out there. So they, they, they're not per se playing for Mike, playing to save his job. They said that's not really in their heads when they're playing games, but they do definitely support him and feel like that he is the man that can lead them back um, on track next year. Last question on Shanahan's future, and, and this applies to the free agency class of next season when the Redskins are going to get some more money under the cap um, to spend. How important is it that he, Shanahan have an extension by that time if he's still in place to be able to lure some free agents? Yeah, well, it's pretty rare that a veteran coach will go into his final year without an extension, although there are some instances. Um, but, you know, I think that that has a lot to do with it, and that's why Shanahan would like to have that contract extension. One, so he's not just looking over his shoulder every time there's a loss, wondering if he's going to get the hook, but also so guys know that he is in place so he can sell that to free agents saying, come here, we've got stability. They've got to be smart with this, and I think that's why having an extension for Shanahan probably would help as far as the sales pitch goes. Mike, thanks for taking the time to join us. Plenty of storylines through the last four weeks of the season. We look forward to reading your coverage in the paper and, uh, and online. Take care. All right. Thanks. You too. I don't All right, think guys, I can finish uh, it's this bold, show. It's bold prediction time. My <laughs> bold prediction is I can't do this show with John. It's, it's, all, it's bold anymore. prediction time. LeVar, I wanna, wait a payroll. minute. I want to give you some credit for a minute. We were off last week for the holiday, but the week before that, your bold prediction for San Francisco yep. was that the, the that the 49ers would easily and cover the spread. Win. And they will and, win. And that was against what Jason and, and Dan had to say, mm -hmm. and you were right. So I you know. were the only one who, who nailed it. That Shocking. A real, Shocking. Play, a real player knew, yeah. what the, knew what knew something and the sports writers didn't. <laughs> Go figure. All right, so Mike, we're talking Kansas City. They come in having lost three in a row. 
um, nine and three. They're they're sliding. Obviously, two of those losses though to, to Denver. Um, give me a bold prediction for Sunday's game. Bold prediction is uh, many Native Americans are going to be insulted by both teams. No, I. Uh, <laughs> there but, we but, go. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but 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 deeper than that uh, on the football level, I, I think um, the Chiefs get off the snide in this game. I don't think it's I don't I don't think it's a walkover. I do think there's players playing for their jobs on that team. I do think Robert Griffin III has been humbled <clears throat> more than he's ever been humbled in his career. And I think he played, and I think he, hey, look, I thought he played well last week. Yeah. I thought, I, I thought, you know, you, you cannot put that game on him last nope. week. He had some, he had a couple questionable plays, but I didn't think he was that bad. They lost to one of the worst teams in the National Football League. They've won five or six games. Come on now. They uh, lost to one of the worst football teams in the National Football League. I don't agree with that. Coughlin is oh, five I mean, and six. They're five and six. They, they've, oh. they've turned into something. They're not. Uh, well, not Jack, Jack Jackson, games. Who did they get those wins against? Well, it, and who was playing? They, they've lost. They, they beat some bad teams. That's fair. All right, give me a give me a bold prediction, Lavar. The what, Chiefs. What was yours, by the way? I didn't yeah, have one. Go, 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 go. No, I, I I'll say. Um, I'll say Alfred Morris gets 30 carries this game. Wow, 30 carries. All right, yeah. Well, that would be reacting to some criticism from last week. All right, a bold prediction: the the Chiefs will break 30, and the Redskins will will not break 20. Chiefs will break 30. That's a blowout. It's a blowout. You, you know, the scheme does feel so. so the Chiefs cover. <laughs> this game feels a lot like the San Francisco game in a way. A good team, probably playoff caliber, coming yeah. in on a on a losing streak. Keep Coming in mind, what's, what's, what's the deciding win. factor here with why they are going to beat the brakes off of the Redskins? The deciding the factor? No. The fact that the Redskins have nothing to play for? No. Alex They're desperate. Smith. No. Nope, I've given you guys all this. Andy <laughs> Reid. <laughs> Andy Reid. And Reed. his familiarity with this team. The Redskins beat Andy Reid twice last year. With the talent that he has and, and, and where he's at, they did beat him last year, but that was that had ran its All course. right, all right, all right. I, Forsyth, I'm telling you, I, you're, you're, I'll tell you what. I'm trying to move the you, Whoa. Move the he, they they think them, I'm delusional. They beat them. Beat them. Yeah, John and then Forsyth Allen. There is, that was not the Andy <laughs> Reid that you were seeing. All right, that fair enough. vintage Andy Reid last I'll say year. Alex Smith outrushes RG3. Alex Smith, sneaky, sneaky good on the, with his legs. He's got 360 yards rushing. That's a good prediction. RG3 had a whole five. You actually looked, the, you actually looked right. that up. All right, let's move on to the Wizards, guys. The team is 7-2 and in their past... 14 some, days. Finally, go. some positive. Nine games yeah, in 14 fun. days, and they are 7-2 and two in that stretch. They're currently, if the season ended today, granted there's still 60-plus games to go, but if the season ended today, they'd be the three seed in the Eastern Conference, Mike. Mm -hmm. How surprised are you with, the, with their recent run, especially considering Bradley Beal's injury? Uh, when you beat teams you're supposed to be, that to me is the, mar the beginning of a mark of a good team. I, I can't say enough about John Wall. He stepped up when the, the criticism befell him, and he showed that he can give up the ball. He doesn't just have to jack up jump shots, and he still is a is a convincing scorer when he needs to be. Look, anybody anybody that watches Chris Paul in this uh, in this world needs to needs to look, use him as the model. Um, he, he gets guys involved. He's all about winning. He gets guys involved, but then he scores when he needs to. He finds a way to score when he needs to, and that's what John Wall is becoming. And so, I, you know, I think, look, all the criticism that John Wall took, he took it to heart, and he's, he's become a much better team player during this streak. Credit to John. What you were going to add to the end of that was that, yes, he deserved a max deal. Um, LeVar, <laughs> <laughs> LeVar um, can this team finish as the three seed if you project out to the end of the season? The East is weak. Yeah, it is. No this doubt. week, and, and I think it's up for, for grabs. I, I think it's very, very top-heavy uh, with, with Indianapolis and, well, Indiana. Miami. Uh, Indiana and Miami. After that, it's up for grabs. I mean, you have your Eastern Conference championship already booked. <laughs> um, now it's just a matter of how many home playoff, hey, could, could how many home, home playoff home games advantage? can you get? I don't think it's possible. And, and here's right. the thing. I can't believe we're talking whether, about this. Whether this they're, it's they're, early. But whether, it's early. Whether, the, whether they are competitive huh. enough, I, I agree. That, that is a lock, depending on how things uh, shake out in terms of seeding. But it might just take this young group of guys experiencing the playoffs for them to be able to understand that they can take it to the next level. But 
again, they're in one of the, the best situations that they could be in because the, the East is, is just it's in disarray right now. The Beal injury is going to catch up to them eventually. It just will unless he comes back in miraculous time. I just think that he's, he's too much of an, uh, an A-grade player for you to lose that for a long period uh, of time. You've also got Nene that. playing on that sore Achilles. It seems like only a matter of time before he goes down, yeah. right? Then before he and becomes Nay play. <laughs> well, look, <laughs> uh, here's but but Nine. but look at it. Look at it from this stretch. They've got they're still waiting for Otto Porter to join the team. Yep. They're winning without Beal right now, so you got to feel like they're going to get better through the season. And they're upcoming the rest of December, Mike. Their combined winning percentage from their opponents is four fourteen. It they should keep winning. It all this, sounds this great, Forsyth. It all sounds wonderful. I've been in this situation before where I used to count games and go, right. you know what, this is this is, this a, is a team right. that could be, you know, play for the Eastern Conference title. I did that in 2007. You know what happened? Gilbert Arenas got hurt. Within two years, the whole franchise blew up. Blew right. up. Oh. So I don't want to even go so there you right won't, now. You won't I don't want to go there. there. I just want to enjoy right, I want to one game at a time. First time since 2009 that they've been at 500 after the season no. began. All right, let's move on to the Nationals, guys. Big trade last night. Um, on paper, it looks like a great deal for the Nationals, yes. Mike. Uh, Doug Fister coming over from, from the Tigers, where um, he succeeded last year, although he was kind of covered up uh, in a star rotation in Detroit, really. Um, but they give up three players for it. What's your take on the deal? 3.67 run, earned run average, pitched over 208 innings last year. I thought the Detroit Tigers had the most formidable starting rotation in baseball, and I thought the Nationals were second. I give the Nationals now the nod as the most formidable starting rotation in baseball. If they can hit, yeah. <laughs> we're talking we're, we are. We're talking NLCS at least. <laughs> oh wait, wait, you're willing to put the Nats in the NLCS, but you don't want to look ahead for the Wizards? No, no, they have no proven track record. At least the Nats <laughs> played a playoff the game Nationals, over the last couple right, right. years. The Nationals have players, <laughs> and, and their, their pitching staff underachieved what, what they were supposed to do this past season, but I don't think that anybody would lose their lose any sleep over thinking that coming back even without this trade that this isn't a very very talented and gifted group that's in, in at the pitching. So I think the biggest issue you can make your pitching strong, but they're probably trying to make their rotation as strong as possible. Basically, previewing not having the, the type of offense that they should have in general. So uh, that's yeah. that's going to be the biggest thing. Cheaper can they generate you. offense? That's that's let's get let's get consistency with offense. If they get consistency with offense, that'll take the pressure off of those pitchers. And Fister was uh, of course cheaper than Dan Heron right. and Edwin Jackson, who Mike Rizzo has kind of gambled on. And even though Jackson wasn't a great playoff pitcher, uh, he, he gave him he gave they him some strong in, yeah. innings and in that role uh, in the rotation, I, I thought he did Edwin very Jackson well. I like Edwin Jackson. Fister has a 3.5 year, and, and Adam Kilgore pointed this out in his story today, was he had guys playing the corners in that defense in Detroit, Cabrera and Fielder, who weren't the best fielders. Sure. He's going to have upgrade defense. He's going to get to face National League lineups, which include the pitchers. He should, that ERA should go down from 3.48 for over the last four years in the American Good League. Good way of looking at it. It's, I mean, so he's a huge upgrade. He's like a number two, number three starter, in my opinion, that you're going to plug into the four spot in this rotation. So it looks great on paper for now. It's all a matter give of how, Jordan, how the, how the prospects play death. out. <laughs> now, they will have to get a left-handed reliever to replace Kroll because they, they, they're going to be uh, short a lefty in, out of the bullpen. They need a left-handed reliever? Make a bold uh, prediction. I, uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, foresight, what do you want? Uh, delusional foresight. <laughs> who gets the better, Delu who has the better year? I'm not your, Johnny Sunshine, your, I'm Johnny your, Delusional. Your Orioles or, or the Nats? O's made a big trade for Jim Johnson now. He, he just left. Uh, I think the Nats on paper should be much better than the Orioles. Easier division. Even too. with the manager change. Even, even with the manager change, the, the lineup is there and it just got better. So, hey, I'd love it if it were the Orioles. Hey, maybe yeah. maybe it'll be a maybe Bel Beltway play. World Series. There we go, Beltway <laughs> Bel World Series. Oh, Johnny, son, Johnny go. Delusional. I've got to keep playing the role. All right, we're, we're probably over our time today. And we're not. We
We made it. We made it. We made it to 30 minutes, but we yeah. have one less one less. Point. I would love to continue to talk about how delusional you are about the change <laughs> in culture at risk. And yeah, and, 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 and I'm not, and I'm like with LeVar, I'm not advocating that we get rid of Mike Shanahan. I'm with him. It doesn't really matter who you bring in. You, they, it, you, right. you, have to, you have to find a if way to win. If it's all about the wins and losses, then, then you have to it's change the head coach. It's not all about wins and losses. But you said that earlier. You're based off of what you, you, said what you do all in right. terms of production. Let's take this. Let's Let's, let's hold this over to next week, and we'll continue this conversation. We've still got four no, weeks of meaningless Redskins No, let's argue after Redskins the cameras games. turned off. <laughs> or we could go on the radio show later, Joe. There right. we go. For everybody here at, at the Washington Post, LeVar Arrington, today. Mike Wise, your host, Jonathan Forsyth. <laughs> Hit us on Twitter at Post Sports Live. Thanks <laughs> for joining us. The delusional Jonathan Forsyth. <laughs>